Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm Lisa Hackworth. Thank you so much for joining us for today's webinar, Choosing an Analytical Cloud Data Platform, Trends, Strategies, and Tech Considerations. All right, so we have a very interesting topic ahead. It should be very insightful all around what you should consider when choosing a high-scale cloud platform for anal analytical performance monitoring and data science needs. With us today as our guest is Doug Henschen, Vice President and Principal Analyst at Constellation Research. Doug's Data to Decisions Research examines how organizations employ data anal analysis to reimagine their business models and gain a deeper understanding of their customers. We're glad to have you with us here today, Doug. Thanks for joining. Great to be here, Lisa. Thank you very much. Excellent. And also with us is Thomas Hazel, our founder, CTO, and chief scientist, or sometimes we like to call him our chief nerd, <laughs> lovingly, of course, uh, here at Chaos Search. He's a serial entrepreneur at the forefront of communication, virtualization, and database technology, and the inventor of Chaos Search's patented IP. How's it going today, Thomas? Thanks, Lisa. No, this is a topic near and dear to my heart, so uh, I look forward to it. Wonderful. All right, just a couple quick notes before I hand it over to this dynamic duo. First, we'll be leaving a few minutes to answer your questions at the end of the presentation. So feel free to type any questions you have into the Q&A area. And then second, I just want to point out quickly our resources area where we've got some helpful content, including our newly released 2022 Cloud Data and Analytics Survey Report. All right, with that, I hope you enjoy today's presentation. Over to you, Doug. Thanks again, Lisa. Great to be here. Great to talk about analytical data platforms. Like Thomas, it's a subject that's, uh, like he said, it's a subject near and dear to my heart as well. Uh, and um, so we're going to answer some key questions, like just what are we talking about here with analytical data platforms? Why are they important? And then help you walk into uh, the choice of one of these platforms, which is a daunting task. We're going to talk about what to look for, give you some guidance to better understand the choices and a cru crucial selection criteria. Just to tell you a little bit about myself, I've been with Constellation Research as an analyst for about seven years, and we're a boutique tech analysis firm, so really the same category as the Gartners or Foresters, but we really focus on what market-leading companies are doing. These are the innovators, the 5% of companies that are coming up with groundbreaking new business models. They're disrupting their industry. And we study them through our Business Transformation 150 awards or Supernova Award case studies now in their 11th year. Uh, and then we try and share that with the next 20 to 25% of companies, those fast followers. Uh, these are the companies that don't want to get left behind, don't want to get disrupted, but they don't want to hit some of those same obstacles and roadblocks that the um, market leading companies encountered in using technology to innovate and transform their operations. And whether it's a market leading company or a, a, a fast follower, they're embracing new technology. When we look at technology, we do so through the lens of our Astro chart. As you see here, this is the Q1 2022 chart for, for data to, to decisions technology. And on that vertical axis, we have organizational adoption from mainstream to early adopter to bleeding edge. And on that horizontal axis, the incremental to transformational to exponential. <clears throat> so top right, you see general artificial intelligence, not the AI and ML we talk about mostly today. This is machines that can think and it's almost science fiction. But a little bit closer to reality, quantum computing, a little bit more real. It's out there, a number of vendors in this space some early innovators looking at the technology, certainly an exponential promise, but very, very bleeding edge. If you look at the opposite extreme in the lower left, things like data warehousing and BI and analytics, been around a long time, lots of technology, decades of, of development there. Uh, but it, you know, it, it, most companies have that, it's not gonna be differentiating. So we're looking at that emerging middle where some of these transformational technologies are coming forward. And that's where those market leading companies, those fast followers are embracing things like the things I've highlighted here, data lakes, log analytics, data fabrics, lake house architectures, AI, neural networks, and so on. So that's really some context for today's discussion. And as Lisa mentioned, we've organized it as a conversation between uh, myself and, and Thomas, and we're going to cover these topics. We'll start with that evolution of these analytical data platforms uh, and just kind of define our terms and where these platforms are going. And we're going to look at the importance to buyers and the organizational challenges 
they face in becoming data-driven organizations. Then we're going to get into the selection process, but we're not going to dive right into product and, and features and functions. We're Again, we have to look at the tech strategy, your tech strategy, where that's bringing you. And, and that will help define the fit of an analytical platform with your organization. And then finally, we're, we'll circle back to those uh, some recommendations on how to move forward. So let's begin at the beginning. And, you know, just what are we talking about here? We'll define analytical data platforms and look at leading examples and trends. And uh, this uh, topic for me kind of uh, led to research early last year. I was in one of these analyst briefings. You have these vendors, you know, get lots of analysts on a Zoom call or it used to be live in-person events. They're coming back. Uh, but the uh, the conversation was, he was pretty much saying, you know, look, all the vendors in this analytical data platform space, they say the same thing. They say, oh, data is crucial. Uh, we're in the cloud. You know, our, our platform is intelligent and automated. Everybody claims to support AI and ML. Um, so the marketing departments are doing a good job. He commented, and this, I'm not naming who this was because every CEO in this space pretty much is saying the same things. We're marketing the heck out of all these buzzwords but customers are completely confused. Even their own sales teams are confused. So that led to this report you see here that I wrote uh, uh, late last year, what to consider when choosing a cloud-centric analytical data platform. It's the basis for today's presentation. So let's dive right in. So what are we talking about here with high-scale analytical data platforms? And we're talking about these in the context of, of delivering them and running them in the cloud. We've obviously had the relational database management systems around for decades to run warehouses and marts, but they're having to evolve uh, for cloud deployment and cloud use. Ditto data lakes. Data lakes have been with us 10, 15 years. These high-scale platforms that take advantage of uh, semi-structured and unstructured information that we weren't analyzing at all until that time, uh, but those too have had to evolve. We have data fabrics and query engines, which are kind of living with both of these and tapping into lakes and warehouses, uh, but they have a special role. And then we have this convergence going on, a very recent trend, the so-called lake house. Uh, and we're even seeing signs that the uh, log analytics, the IT-centric monitoring and management uh, capabilities might be converging into this single analytical data platform. The promise is to have a single platform that could do it all and lots of vision that that is our future. And uh, then we, we get these uh, security application monitoring, application management, some of these platforms that have been very siloed and separate from these other types of analytical data platforms. We look a little bit closer at the, at the trends we've seen from um, 2005 to 2010. We really had this emergence of this big data and uh, saw the traditional technologies kind of outstripped. So we started seeing this distributed, massively parallel processing platforms, columnar platforms to, to try to deal with that high scale while still delivering high query performance. Then from 2010 to 2015, we saw the emergence of some open source platforms, particularly Hadoop and some NoSQL databases, uh, finally tapping into some of that semi-structured and unstructured information. Uh, freeing up some flexibility because we're not ha constantly having to model everything into columns and rows. Then 2015 to 2020, uh, really the, the big movement into the cloud is beginning. So we saw the separation of compute and storage to take advantage of you know, tapping into those resource pools in the cloud in a flexible way. And you know we, we have these data on, on hand now in lakes and warehouses we really wanted to use it for uh, real interest in machine learning and AI. So that really flourished in that uh, five-year period. And now we're in this latest period, 2020 to 25, uh, 25 we're still, uh, we've seen the cloud movement really gathering steam, particularly with the, the pandemic. Uh, and we've seen the evolution of some of those platforms, the warehouses and the data lakes embracing object storage underneath the hood as this lower cost, simpler way of managing all that information. So Thomas, uh, I'm sure you have some perspective to share on what you're hearing from your customers and, and some of these trends from, from your vantage point. Yeah, no, well well said, Doug. And you know, this evolution really is underpinning a, a revolution of innovation. Now we're in the information age, but really over the last uh, several de decades, data has been growing. This uh, this graphic here has shown that since 2010, you know, 
terabytes, petabytes, zettabytes. I think IDC said by 2025, 175 zettabytes of data will be generated. And we all know now that this is the lifeblood of business. You know, in the early 2000s, you know, mobile, web 2.0, cloud, you know, businesses were starting to build out, you know, products and platforms to, you know, deliver on, on the, the market needs. That, as you were indicating, has led into this explosion of concepts like big data, which was driving big business. And this is where those infrastructure, these platforms started to be built out where in 2012, the operational side of the business, the business intelligence uh, warehousing side were coming together because at scale, IT, operational security, all now mattered. And it was really a, a struggle for companies to, to do both the operational as well as the business. And then you know, around 2015, everyone talked about scale. You know, you, you think about the five, Fortune 500 companies, yeah, they're doing petabytes, exabytes. Now the startup is doing terabytes to petabytes. And so everyone was leading on scale in the cloud, driving a whole bunch of innovation. But now in the, in the 2020s, business agility is driving all the back end, whether it's IT, operational infrastructure, security, all things that matter. And what I've seen, and I think some of the things that you're alluding to in your report is that both the operational and business is having a convergence because both sides matter, both are hard to scale and data analytical platforms seem to be the trend and the answer. If you go to the next slide that I have, you know, there's been a lot of promises in this evolution that you talked about. First, it was, you know, big data and Hadoop, and then, you know, maybe it's the data lake, maybe it's not, maybe now it's this lake house, but, you know, the promise was, what if you could centralize all your information and efficiently grow your business as your data grows to, to drive those insights, both from a business operational, from a security, et cetera. However, the swamp term we've heard for data lakes, these siloed uh, data streams have been resulting in a lot of pain, a lot of time, a lot of costs associated with trying to derive insights of the business as well as the operational side of things. And this gap adds risk both to the security uh, operational side of your business as well as your competitors, your, your need to drive innovation through product, through, through data. And so scaling your uh, business has been a real challenge and uh, uh, our viewpoint is uh, it's both on the operational as well as on the product side. Well, I couldn't agree with you more, uh, particularly on the two points that agility is so important. That's really the driver behind the move to the cloud. And the second one is complexity. And that's why we've seen, and I'll get back to that, the complexity, why we've seen a change in these platforms to, as, as we move into the cloud and uh, that embrace of uh, cloud uh, native object storage as, as sort of the underlying uh, architecture underneath all of these platforms today. So next up, let's talk uh, uh, about the importance of these platforms uh, and some of the challenges that organizations face as they kind of contemplate how they embrace these challenges. You've probably seen this quote, every company is now a software company. That's from Satya Nadella. Uh, and he's really talking about the reality that you know probably all the companies you deal with today, certainly all the companies I deal with, banks, grocery stores, uh, insurance companies, all of them have embraced digital technology and in nine times out of 10, when they have innovation, it's probably data-driven analysis. Certainly for these platforms, these analytical data platforms, the number one use is really customer understanding, customer 360, uh, understanding not only the conventional transactions of old, but also now the online and mobile behavior, customer churn, uh, you know, um, the next best action, um, upsell, cross-sell, all of these things. That's really uh, kind of the reason number one that companies are embracing these analytical data platforms. You're seeing a lot of innovation. You know, insurance companies, every insurance company, most of them now have this, uh, you know, dynamic pricing of their policies based on actual driving data. I mean, that's really an in innovation. Now it's pretty mainstream, but every one of the companies that does that does it with an analytical data platform. We're seeing all sorts of connected IoT type scenarios, whether it's cars or commercial uh, construction equipment, farm equipment, even the appliances in your home. We're seeing them 
being connected, you know, you know f- flashing new operating uh, software and changing the performance, improving the performance of it, or coming up with uh, predictive maintenance type uh, uh, applications. Uh, f- finance and financial services, fraud and risk has always been important to them. But all of those fraud and risk analyses have been put on steroids, and certainly we're seeing un- unprecedented cyber attacks uh, and challenges in, in risk today. And, and all of those analyses now are on these high-scale analytical uh, data platforms. If you look at other, there's so many industries. Uh, just another one to throw in the bunch here is telcos. You know, they're not only looking at for the customer churn, customer behavior, but also for the optimization of their network and understanding how their far-flung networks, you know, what are the bottlenecks, what are the problems? They can even anticipate changes so they don't have um, impacts on their customers. So as I've said in social media, you know, if it's an innovation effort, if it's a transformation effort, nine times out of 10, it's data driven. Uh, but harnessing data at scale like that is is not easy. And uh, the question is, how ready is your organization to take advantage of data? So if we um, uh, look at some of these organizational considerations, this is sort of where your uh, company is coming from. And I think it's important to have a real understanding of this starting point before you even contemplate a technology selection. So you gotta start off with a budget. What is our tech budget today? And what is it envisioned to be? What is the CXO, uh, uh, C-suite uh, embrace of the idea of innovation? Do they know what it means to be a data-driven company or what it will take to become a data-driven company? What are the tech visionaries, the CIO, the chief data officer, the chief analytics officer, what are their visions? for becoming more data-driven and coming up with data-driven and insight-driven uh, services and differentiating capabilities and applications. Uh, then you got to look at what their ambitions are and compare that to the reality of, of their technical capabilities, the skills of their data team. You know, What will they have to grow? What capabilities will they have to extend in order to support that? Then you go back to you know, the existing tech you know, what do you what do you bog down by? What is uh, something that you want to rise above? We want to eliminate, move on from, consolidate, replace. Uh, and, and that sort of brings you back to your tech budget. What is your keeping the lights on reality? What is that uh, technical debt that you can't get away from versus what you might be able to free up and uh, uh, put towards uh, innovation? Uh Thomas, what are your thoughts on those those topics? You know, it's 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 well said. Those considerations are are key to any organization. You know, um, the 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 IT uh, folks when they see where their business is going, they try to plan ahead. But you know, when you're in the thrall of you know, everyday operations, you have the CEO asking, "I need more information. We need to drive product." The CTO is saying. I need to scale out my log and business intelligence. The architects are trying to figure out how to bring it together. Then all the data streams, the data, the data engineer are trying to set those pipelines, you know, the DBA, the schema management, the isolation of, of that data, and then the DevOps, the information security folks, all trying to manage it, and then let alone trying to QA it. I mean, everything matters in trying to derive value out of data, scaling infrastructure, and then ultimately deriving that data. And we want it to be, you know, minutes, hours, maybe a day, but in reality, to do any type of product BI type change or scaling your back end are really weeks, if not months. And, you know, this has led to this innovation, this innovation curve that Doug has been leading up to and these platforms to help drive every aspect of data needs within an organization, both on the operational and the business intelligence. And so I like to say operational is the tail that wags the business side of things. And, you know, if you're not worried about your back end, your front end may not do too well. And we see the pain on both sides. So I don't know, uh, Doug, if you have any, any, you know, obviously, you know, you do research on this topic. I'm sure you've seen it time and time again. No, the thing I like about this slide is that uh, all the key constituents uh, are there. I think and that's a point I get to later in my presentation that y- you need to have all these people on board. And they all have opinions. Yeah. So if I go into the next slide, this is actually taking from Doug and his all his great research. You know, there is an evolution of building out an analytical data platform. We're seeing it. 
you know, from the 2000s to now 2020 and to and beyond, that that demand of data at scale needs to have a lack of a better term, a unification. And there's been these trends where first you had siloed solutions, uh, you know, for each use case, and then that that train of people involved in decision making got more and more complicated, more and more time consuming. But that desire to have that one unified architecture and platform, and that's what led into the data lakes. That's what led into this object storage back end. But these new breeds of data lakes with lake house, centralized versus federated approaches. And our viewpoint is that not just a data platform that unifies and brings data together, but the functionality, searching and SQL and ML, all on one platform because those months to years sometimes to getting a platform up, they really need days, if not weeks, for that analysis. Uh, you know, this is your report, but I, I think you said it quite well. The analytic data platform is now, and organizations need to take advantage of it. Yeah, again, back to that point of agility. That's a, the key driver in business today. So let's, uh, well, I think you have, have another point. Yeah. And so, you know, it's not just, you know, myself or Doug and his research firm are seeing this. Uh, Andreessen Horowitz did a great article last year of architectures need to change. Our philosophy needs to change how to do data management and analytics. And there is a call to action they almost put out, but we're, we're all seeing this, where this ability to create technology and platforms to unify all these workloads because the toil, the complexity, the cost of operational and business intelligence is really problematic. And so, you know, with all this massive growth has driven different types of platforms or retool platforms, yes, all in the cloud. And that convergence of to scale your business, you need to scale your operations. And this is a fundamental shift of this, this bringing things together and really a blueprint of how companies are looking to scale. And I, I know for our customers, a lot of times they come to us as part of the vision of what they're trying to do in their IT organization is bring these silos in to ultimately provide analysis for their business needs. Well, excellent. I, I, I glom onto the term uh, convergence, and I think that's uh, really a salient theme here to, to go along with uh, agility. So let's dive into the selection process, but we're not going to talk about technology right or the uh, the this individual products right away. We're going to talk about uh, the 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 technology considerations. So we've talked about where you're coming from; those organizational considerations, tech strategy considerations are about where you're going, irrespective of the this platform choice. We're going to talk about, and it really starts with cloud. You know, which cloud? When are you going to be getting into the cloud? To what extent? Uh, we're going to talk about. Uh, I'm going to talk about cloud a little bit more deeply in a second. Ditto uh, data lake, also key here. Do you have one data lake? Do you have many data lakes? What workloads are you running on those data lakes? Uh, that's all crucial. We'll talk about that more deeply. Then, you know, your BI and analytics. Uh, you know, how mature are your BI and analytics? Uh, a lot of these have been around for a long time. The question is, is, is that platform developing? Is it fairly fresh and new as something you're growing or is it legacy? Is it something where you have, you know, scads of reports and dashboards that nobody looks at anymore? Are you looking to consolidate? Are you looking to replatform? Is that part of the discussion here around a new analytical data platform? Ditto the log analysis, those monitoring and management uh, uh, capabilities you need. You know, where are you standing today with said platform? Is it mature? Is it giving you what you need? Or are you looking at replatforming and um, adding new tools and capabilities on this front. And then lastly, data science uh, and en data engineering, heavily associated with those data lakes. Um, but is there uh, a, a bigger ambition maybe to converge some things onto data lakes? That's the primary uh, a trend we're seeing, either uh, converging onto a more capable uh, data warehouse and data mart or, to, or onto a more capable uh, data lake. So, uh, and then all of these things uh, uh, feed on each other into, you know, the ramifications for the analytical data platform selection that you make. But really the most important one to focus on here is that cloud strategy. You know, what has been your progress into the cloud? What is your commitment to go deeper into the cloud? Which clouds, 
are you choosing and which ones are standards? Are you using infrastructure as a service and running your platforms and, and applications on infrastructure as a service? Or are you more heavily favoring the platform as a service, the cloud native services? Are you, in terms of your data, are you trying to run in a virtual private cloud? Is there data sensitivity that you have to worry about? Or are you running directly on, on cloud and, and uh, not as concerned about uh, the data sensitivity? Uh, and then, you know, what is the shape of your analytical data platform? You know, the, the, this, this will, these all these cloud considerations will influence that heavily. And ditto on the data lake strategy front. You know, where are you today? Do you have one data lake or multiple data lakes? Is it primarily about the data engineering and data science? Or have you embraced some of this convergence and you have more of a lake house? You're doing some BI analytic workloads against a data lake. You have maybe a query engine that runs against a data lake. Um, and you know, if you have multiple workloads, what is your data governance around data lakes? Some companies have dedicated data lakes for different roles and needs, maybe because the, the governance capabilities are very complicated. So you, you've got to understand all these aspects of ex existing data lakes and where you want to go with uh, these capabilities, the workloads you want to run on the data lake. Again, all these trends will greatly impact your selection of an analytical data platform. And that brings us finally to actually looking at these platforms, products that are available on the market and I would divide this slide into two areas of capabilities. There's the workloads that you now envision and understand that you want to run against this uh, this new on this new analytical data platform. BI and analytics capabilities is that something you're wanting to look at this new analytical data platform? Data science and engineering, and then those um, monitoring and management, log file analysis, those IT centric analyses, which of those combination of those workloads do you want to be running on this analytical platform? Then you have to look at the aspects of the platform itself, how it runs, where it runs, and the capabilities for each of these workloads. So deployment management, where and how it deploys, where and how it is managed, uh, the workload and administrative management, if you have these competing workloads, if you have um, really tight SLAs and really robust requirements, these workload and administrative management capabilities will be crucial and you'll have to investigate each and every one of them. And then you wanna look at cost and ongoing maintenance. And let me dive deeper into a couple of these points, starting with that cost and that ongoing maintenance. Uh, you know, uh, as I've mentioned, the data lakes have been are around a, a while now and uh, we can learn from history here because uh, Back in 2010, I recall people being uh, really thrilled, oh my God, this is open source technology and it's not expensive and we can have limitless storage. And oh my God, they found out how uh, complicated a big honking data lake can be. And a lot of them turned into cesspools because the data management and the, uh, the sophistication and the uh, generations of versions of software, et cetera, caught up with them. And so, uh, the, on, the there, these are two very separate issues, the initial cost and what you might think it will cost you versus the ongoing maintenance. And that's where we saw these data lakes have to evolve for the sake of simplicity and for the sake of um, the cost uh, as they moved into the cloud. Uh, that picture changed very drastically. And then you have to think about cost and ongoing maintenance uh, in terms of the number of platforms you expect to have to run. It's all well and good if you can choose a best of breed platform for BI and analytics and another best of breed platform for data engineering and data science and yet a third one for uh, you know the, the management, uh, monitoring and management uh, requirements, but boy, that's gonna add up. So that's why a lot of people are looking at convergence for the sake of cost, for the sake of uh, hope, hoped for simplicity. But balancing that, you have to get the functionality and performance that you need. And I think the um, my favorite analogy analogy is a bullet train. You know, we don't want a race car; we need a bullet train, fast and performant, but able to carry a lot of passengers and potentially um, multiple passengers, including those BI analytics workloads, including those data science and data engineering workloads, and including those log file analysis requirements. And you got to have uh, 
you know, a first class, you know, uh, a car and first class security for those things that are crucial and governance. And then, you know, the second class and third class, they all will need a, a fair degree of performance. That's why the bullet train and not a freight train is the best analogy in, uh, that I, I can think of. But uh, it, it's all got to be there. So uh, summarizing, you got to know where you've, you're coming from with those organizational challenges. You got to know where you're going with that tech strategy. Then you can get down to that product uh, screening and hopefully get to a nice short list. And then once you've done that, I absolutely encourage you to talk to customers of this analytical data platform. Ideally, they'll have similar challenges and similar scale. They don't necessarily have to be in the same industry, but you want to look for, you know, if they're doing BI analytics against this data platform, if they're doing data science and engineering, et cetera, you want to be able to talk to them about the skills that were required, the deployment uh, a footprint that they had, any challenges they had along the way. You want to talk to them about the vendor, you know, the vendor's responsiveness to their uh, requests, to any problems that they had, feature requests. Uh, to the community, to uh, skills development, et cetera. Um, and so that's a, a crucial part of it too. Thomas, I'm sure you, you can chime in on some of these points. Yeah, no, no, well said. I love the bullet train analogy where if you have this European sports car, sure, it's really fast, but you're not going to move uh, and help out a lot, of, a lot of folks. You really need to bring the whole organization along. And that uh, bullet train is, is a great analogy. And part of that thinking, this evolution that Doug has been outlining is the genesis of why we created Chaos Search, where we saw the, the pain of both operational and business. We saw the data growth and we said, what if, what if you could take all this data, this massive scale and, and growing every company now has terabytes of petabytes, it seems, and then automate that process for insights while reducing time, cost, and complexity. Now, these are a lot of things, but the, the insight behind Chaos Search was, well, we need to innovate both in the technology as well as the architecture to achieve these three core points. And that leads into, you know, our solution. Next slide, you know, the, the, the vision the, the mission behind Chaos Search was from left to right. And a lot of times companies start from right to left where they worry about their business and then figure out the operational, the security, et cetera. Um, we believe that you need one solution to both provide that business agility and growth without having to worry about the back end. And, and if you have a security issue or your back end can't scale with you, your business is going to be at risk and can't scale. So our mission is to enable this evolution of data platform, but provide three core aspects to your data, to your data lake. And that is search, think of log analytics, uh, security, monitoring, alerting, SQL. Maybe you want some SQL access to your operational data, but maybe from the business side, the analysis of your business data. And then ultimately, can I build in predictive analysis or anomaly detection in one platform without having to move the data? And, and you know, again, time, cost, and complexity are, are always the thing. So we created here at KS Search a cloud data platform. We, we've been talking about this throughout the presentation where the data lake, if you will, is hot again. You know, when, when uh, I created the technology that underpins Chaos Search, shoot, eight, nine years ago, um, when I started the company five, six years ago, data lakes were kind of going into the, are they good, are they bad? But they made so much sense because the ability to centralize, govern, manage object storage was not thought of as a core platform, but now it is. And then build on top of this philosophy of data lakes, on top of this centralized governance, a new type of platform, a platform that you can do different workloads like log analytics, like BI. And so what we've done here at KS Search is with your cloud storage that you own, you connect a service, a SaaS service like Chaos Search into your cloud storage. And as data streams into your lake, we automatically detect it, index it, manage all the schema so that your favorite APIs, Elastic API, SQL APIs, ML, all are on that data lake within your organization. So we provide a single unified platform in your data lake that goes after 
log analytics, you think of a security performance, BI analytics, maybe dashboards, insights into your customers, and ultimately uh, predictive analysis. But here's the thing, don't change all that complexity of data pipelines where a lot of times data lakes, data goes in, but then moves out to your side of solutions. So no data pipelines, simplicity in will automate the discovery of your data and no move, moving out. And here's the thing, we have this unique, what we call data refinery, that not only we index the data fully upfront that's stored into your account, but you and our data refinery can create views, lenses into that data for your log analytics, security ops type scenario, or your business intelligence on one platform. You don't have to re-index it. You don't have to move the schema. These views in our data refinery can get access by both APIs. And why is this important? The time, the cost and complexity of this type of data at scale um, is crucial to your business. And imagine if you had one platform, a unified platform to go after all these workloads. And again, if your business is growing and you can't keep up with your backend or vice versa, it's a real challenge to your business. So if we go to the next slide, you know, what we call the chaos search effect, you know, the idea that with a chaos search solution, you have unlimited retention. Why is that important? Well, particularly security and performance, the ability to know what happened and why, you know, a lot of these systems get so big that you can't afford maybe a few days of analysis, but sometimes you need weeks, if not months, no data movement back to the complexity of uh, moving into silo solutions. You don't have to do that with the chaos search, reducing the costs, and then freeing up all your resources to focus on what you should be, the operational side and the business side without worrying about the scaffolding. And then why does this matter? All your business value, all your agility of trying to compete with your competitors or come out with new offerings that you thought were impossible because of the time it took to build out the solution. So, you know, I, I want the IT individual to be seen as a superhero. So when your CEO reaches out, hey, we need this, you can react quickly and efficiently and do it within days versus the weeks and months. And this is what we bring to, to, the, to the market is a cloud data platform, a data lake philosophy, but you can go after your SQL BI use cases as well as your log uh, elastic type workloads. Uh, I don't know any, any comments, Doug. I mean, you know, we're taking the left to right moving into the, 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 the more business intelligence, but if, if the business intelligence platforms don't worry about the monitoring security, you know, it's the, it's the tail that whacks the dog, I guess. Yeah. Well, clearly you've, uh, you, you're one of the leading uh, proponents of this convergence uh, and uh, great to see it in the market. So it's not just Lake House, it's Lake House plus th those other IT centric uh, log analysis workloads that are also so important. But heretofore, we've tended to see that as a silo and a separate proprietary uh, a platform of its own. And nice to see the connection uh, among them all. Well, that's great. Uh, let's move into our final recommendations here and we'll get to your questions very shortly here in the Q&A session. Uh, but I'd like to close, you know, just recapping, you, you want to have those organizational challenges understood, where you're coming from, the tech, tech uh, strategy, where you're going. But you also have to look over the horizon at some of these trends. And the first trend we've already talked about, that convergence, not just of the warehouse and lake, but also these uh, log analysis platforms that Tom uh, Thomas talked about that uh, KS Search is pursuing. Uh, we have to look at the uh, desire to democratize the data science. We're seeing examples with AutoML, for example, and other sorts of pre-built algorithms expressed in SQL. Uh, as you uh, start using cloud services, you often hear about this closed loop learning. As If it's offered as a service, you can start to learn from the behavior seen on that platform. And so we're seeing a lot of automation features, uh, uh, automated uh, scaling, automated tuning and optimization of queries, for example. That's something you have to look at and consider and whether the platform has any sort of automation capabilities. And then also many of the largest firms we deal with and certain, certainly those market leading companies want flexibility. They have a multi-cloud strategy. They want to deploy on multiple clouds. And there's a lot of uh, work on uh, Kubernetes-based technology to ensure sort of a consistency of deployment, consistency of management, no matter where you want to deploy 
uh, your platform. So, but don't be like this guy and just think about these things on your own. You've got to get a team. And that's why I liked your slide earlier, Thomas, with all those constituents. So it's not just the team that pursues BI and analytics. It's not just the team that pursues uh, data science and engineering, uh, and not just the team that does the IT monitoring and management, all those other uh, uh, important executives that you need to bring to the table. Most importantly, you got to bring the business to the table, the line of business and the C-suite. Uh, you got to bring them to the, the table when you're envisioning innovation. And you also have to bring them to the table when you're in a, in a buying cycle and budgeting for these uh, innovations and transformations of how you use technology. It's all about driving the business, not building another technology and hoping they will come as uh, happened sort of in the early days of the data lakes. So uh, I'll close with these recommendations. I highly encourage you when you're looking at any sort of analytical workloads to really look at the entire breadth of what you're doing, including the BI analytics, including the data science and engineering, and including those uh, management, uh, monitoring and management uh, log analysis workloads. You have to assess the maturity and where you stand and the need to upgrade that platform. You don't wanna make a, a platform choice and then two years from now realize that, hey, this other whole requirement needs a new platform as well. You wanna anticipate. You wanna think big and long-term. That, so that's part of that. The other is to look beyond the, the you know, big, hairy, audacious project you have in front of you to sort of anticipate where else your organization might go. Mergers, acquisitions, moving into adjacent markets. You, you, again, you don't want to choose a platform that will prove to be inadequate two to three years down the road. Uh, again, I would say if you've particularly if you've got a multi-cloud strategy, you got to look for that deployment consistency and flexibility across multiple clouds. You got to look at that skill set, the resources available for the technology choices you're making, because if your your vision is audacious but you don't have the skills to get there. Uh, you're not going to be able to maximize your investment, take advantage of your investment. And then lastly, seek out the reference customers. And, and Thomas, uh, I see that you also have some recommendations here. Yeah, I, I think your first two really resonate with, with me because of this evolution we've been talking about. Uh, a lot of IT professionals, architects um, have really said, I need to not just solve my problems today, but solve them next year, the year after. And, you know, there's so many gates in, in data access, whether it's the gates of every individual that we saw um, on the data journey. But if we can remove those gates, uh, you know, your business is, is better off. Your, your business agility um, is now on full throttle. And, you know, when you have to move data, you add risk, you add time, you add costs. And the vision behind, you know, chaos search, and really what I hear time and time again is that, I need the data when I need it, how I want to consume it, whether it's your favorite API, whether it's your favorite tooling, all these things are challenges. And then you 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 add another gate if you can't get access the way you need access to. And again, choosing a platform that all the constituents of your organization, particularly IT and the marketing and the sales can leverage is key. And again, if it can only do one use case, um, you're going to revisit it. You're going to revisit it often. And if it doesn't scale elastically, um, you're definitely going to revisit it, if, if not have it fall over. So, you know, my recommendation is, you know, love the data lake, but then make sure you put a platform on top that can uh, unlock it. Well, very Great. good. And with that, I think we're uh, time for the Q&A. Lisa, what do you got for us? Yes, thanks, guys. That was great stuff. Um, really, really amazing. So, yeah, thank you so much. And now we'd love to transition over to address the questions that have come in from the audience. So, again, if you have questions that you thought of during the presentation, feel free to put those into the Q&A area and we will get through a few of them right now. So it looks like one that came in, um, this one, it looks like it's for you, Doug. They say... You mentioned data fabrics, but didn't get into them. How are they different than data lakes? Well, I'd, I'd say I didn't get into them because it's not really a data platform. It's really a, a federated approach. The, the, the premise is, you know, play the data where it lies, so to speak. Uh, uh, that's the promise. Um, uh, Thomas and I were actually talking about this recently. And, um, you know, when it comes to having a performant workload, what tends to happen is that data gets put into a more centralized 
lake or warehouse or what have you, um, it, it is a useful. Um, uh, you know, uh, the idea of uh, connecting to data uh, in an ad hoc way. Uh, Thomas, I think you were talking about that. What, any any perspectives from yeah. you? You know, the, there's, there's no, per, yeah, there's no perfect tool or perfect scenario, but there are major themes, and I and I think we both agree that a lake is a major theme. Your know, warehouse capability is a major theme. Fabric, data mesh, these are themes that I think any solution that you choose has to work in concert. You know, so I know here at at Chaos Search, we want to work in a federated way. Why? Because there's always going to be siloed viewpoints, but if you need performance, you know, come take a look at a data lake or centralized viewpoint when you have, you know, terabytes to petabytes of, of querying to, to do. Great. All right. Next question. And this one is probably for Thomas. Um, it says, who owns the data with Chaos Search? A really important point to our offering on purpose where you know, building so many solutions and architectures, owning the customer data, you know, puts us at risk. So our premise was, I want the customer to own everything. And with a data lake cloud of storage philosophy, particularly with Amazon or Google or Azure, is that you stream your data in and you connect our service. When we index the data for your querying, we store those indices into your account. So the customer owns every aspect of their data and they just provide access rights uh, to us so that we can both read only index the data and then read write for the querying and the analysis. Very good. All right, next question. Some database vendors talk about extending SQL to support data science. Any, sorry, any advice on what to look for? Yeah, I could I could chime in on that one. Uh, you know, uh, a lot of times uh, they have that on the label. You know, we support. You can use Python, or you can use R, uh, or or we have some pre built algorithms. Uh, you really got to look under the hood of of that claim. Uh, okay, how many? Uh, uh, you know, what can you support in terms of SQL? Is it strictly the ability to support Python or R or bring in algorithms, uh, uh, do they have it pre-built or do you have to code everything? So uh, we support Python is not the same as we have uh, a detailed library of, of pre-built uh, user-defined functions, for example, that are, are ready to go and can be pulled out from our library. So go beyond the buzzwords, look under the hood to see what's there and available to use and who can use it. Is it a SQL? Is it implemented in SQL or are you going to need somebody who needs to know how to code Python or R or what have you? Yeah, no, no, well said. And, and you know, we've taken an approach almost like a framework where you want to provide that multi-model API access, whether you're you're tooling for analysis as search, SQL, or you know, PyTorch or TensorFlow. But then to your point, Doug, are there higher level uh, tooling from that. I know for us, we want to do both, right? We Not only do we want to provide API access for the developer because they may have scenarios that are beyond what is out of the box. Um, but, you know, I know for, for me, for us at Chaos is anomaly detection is, okay, I have a data stream. Tell me when it goes off the, the, the you know, the attended consequences and then set up an alert if it happens again. So I think you almost need both. You need the APIs as well as a tooling so that out of the box scenarios that you're pretty common are supported and don't have to build out any infrastructure or tooling around it. Perfect, great advice, good answer. Okay, next question is for Thomas. Can you give some examples of use cases that are enabled with Chaos Search's multi-API, multi-mode approach? Well, that's a broad, broad, you know, concept, right? So I would say, you know, there are a lot of search scenarios in the log analytics perspective, it's typically security, performance, operational type scenarios. Now, with that said, um, there are times where if you're, if you're using tools like the Elk stack, there are multiple data sources that you want to correlate against. And with our service, you can do joins or correlations across multiple data sources. So there's a, there's a case where you're not just using search, but you're asking for relational constructs. Now, 
I, I, I love the search and Kibana type tooling, which we support, but I do know I have uh, the finance team that wants to get access to uh, our data and, you know, a looker or tableau is a more preferred uh, consumption. And so I would say that uh, it's access to data the way that you want to have data. Now, there are scenarios where you just can't do certain things with other platforms and having that multi model. Now you have that optionality. Why does that matter? You don't have to move the data out to a silo solution. You can keep it on one platform, one unified platform and provide that access. But I would say that, you know, there are a variety of cases where uh, SQL makes more sense for some data, just the constructs as well as search. So, um, you know, choose your favorite API, choose your favorite tooling. Great. All right, and it looks like we're, we're coming up on time. So we'll take one more question. This last one I'll throw over, I think, to Doug first. So the question is, some cloud vendors are talking about portability of cloud services to on-prem or even other clouds. What's your take on these options? Well, yeah, I mean, it, you got to remember, it's about bringing their cloud to other places. Uh, uh, AWS has outposts. It's about going on-prem, not into other clouds. Uh, I would say it's kind of green, it's pretty new, and you don't have those analytical data platforms like Redshift aren't available yet on, on Outposts. Uh, uh, Azure has Arc. Uh, these are uh, Kubernetes-based technologies. Uh, haven't seen it show up uh, on other clouds. It's primarily about on-prem. We have uh, a, a Google Anthos, same sort of Kubernetes-based uh, framework. Uh, they actually do have some services on some other clouds through uh, BigQuery Omni, but that's not actually the database. It's uh, it's an a, a external table access to object stores on other clouds. So I'd size them all up as, as rather green, limited to their own tech stack. Um, Thomas, any perspectives on that? Yeah, it's, it's an important one. Um, we chose to build a, lack of a term, a cloud agnostic architecture to move across clouds and the deployment. Um, now I'll be real frank, we go where the customers are and the three major cloud providers um, seem to make a lot of sense, you know, but like Outpost, we've had customers ask, you know, can you go on Outpost because there are no real good analytical services. And, you know, to be frank for, for the right use cases, we would. We do have a SaaS oriented model in clouds we also provide what we're calling a VPC deployment where the customer not only owns their data in cloud over storage, but also runs the service. And you know, for the right organization, big financial firms, et cetera, um, you know, we can deploy really anywhere because of our agnostic platform. But you know, you, you go where the where the the data needs to live and you go where the clouds are. So, you know, I think Doug and I will will agree. It's like, you know. You know, as every cloud provider you know builds out a new platform, we'll be there. Great. All right. Well, with that, we'll go ahead and wrap it up. If we didn't get to your question, we will follow up to make sure we get you an answer. So, a big thank you to everyone who joined us today. We'd love if you'd let us know what you thought about today's webinar by by completing the survey before you sign off. And Doug and Thomas, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, to our audience, we hope you enjoyed today's presentation. Have a great day and we'll see you again soon. Thanks everyone. Thanks everyone. Thanks Lisa. Thanks Doug. Thank you Thomas.